couch dogs me palaces Hey there, Lick and Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome fingerstyle blues lesson right here on Lick and Riff. In this video, we're gonna explore fingerstyle blues in G. And if you're not familiar with the way I do things around here, the purpose of the whole improvisation series in general and the blues series uh, in particular is to give you a toolbox to go and explore the blues and the guitar by yourself. So uh, I'm gonna give you as many ideas as I can. I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna show you the chord shapes and the ideas and the licks you can use around them. And then you go and just play it your own style. I don't like to impose anything on my students, including my own ideas. So I'm just gonna give you a toolbox and then you're gonna go and connect the dots in any way you see fit in your own style with your own methods. So, um, blues in G has G or G7. Okay, we're gonna talk about the chords in a second. Then C7 or C major. And then we have D7 or D major. So there's a lot we can do around, um, around these chord shapes alone, okay, without even using licks. We can play G, okay, we can play G7, okay, with one on the E string and three on the B string, okay, to create that. that um, vamp sort of feel. And it's just one and three on strings, one and two, okay? With the bass note right along with it. And you can slide, okay, from two to three on the bass. And then you can, um, okay, slide from two to three on the second string and hammer on zero to one on the E string. Okay, it sounds complicated, but just one little movement, just practice that. So that's one leg you can use. Now, there's another G chord shape, and I'm not talking about the bar. I'm talking about the same notes as the bar, but I'm talking about this. Okay, this is a very important distinction. It's three, four, five on strings, two, three, and four. Okay? And three on the sixth string with your thumb, because then you can move the chord around, okay? Which... If you do with the bar, you have to change the bass note as well. And it's very cumbersome. So you can also move one note to create this ugly sound. But in context, okay, it sounds uh, as if you're playing one chord with one hand and a lick with the second hand. Okay, You're playing lap piano. Okay, so okay, you can also add chromatics, okay, to create. Okay, I'm playing okay, with my finger and then with my thumb, okay, okay and then, okay, zero, zero, one, two, then the thumb, okay, or the whole chord, and you can also Okay, play licks using the pinky on five, pull off to three on the second string. Or even six. Okay, and of course you can do it with the bar as well. Okay, but with the bar, it sounds like a bar. You get that continuous sound, whereas if you're playing this, then it gives you a different sound, okay? Um, just the result of a different shape. It gives you a different sound and the listener can hear it. You can hear that this is a bar and this is not, mainly because you can also vibrate it, okay? So, and you have the open E string to play around with, okay, which gives you the finger style feel. Now, if you want G7, you just play three on the fourth string instead of five. And then you get this. And, and it's a D shape only on string 
strings two, three, and four. So again, I want to emphasize, try the bar and try the different shapes. Okay, using the open E string um, as well. You can also do this instead of the thumb. You can play these fingers as the D shape and one on the bass. And then you have the open E string. But you have no finger for soloing. Okay, so every different shape has its own pros and cons. Now, um, C, of course. You have C, you have C7 with three on the third string, and you have C7 here, okay? Bar on three, A shape. And then you go back to G. Now, you can also pull off one to zero on the E string. And then you can move to C9 and stay on three on the second string and play uh, on, on strings two to five, you have three, three, two, three. And then you can move that chromatically, so. Okay, and then you have, you have the open second string, okay, because that's in G. And this creates, okay, the, the minor second again but it helps us create a lick. Okay, if we play the open second string, three on the uh, third, and then open second string, and then the open third string for G again. Okay, now for soloing on G, you have, you have three and zero on strings three and four, so you can, complicated here. You can do two and three. Okay, you have two and three on strings three and four. Okay, you can alternate between them. You don't have to play all of them all the time. Okay, and you can slide. You can also do three to four if you want a little bit of chromaticism. Okay? Because if you're playing three to four on the fourth string and then play the open fifth, uh, the open third, then it's as if you're playing three, four, five. Okay? So, um... Right? And then... And you can also use two and three on the fourth string inside C. then go back to G. It all depends on the last note. You can do whatever you like during the lick as long as your last note is a part of the next chord. So aim for that. Okay, that's why I always aim for the open third string or the open fourth because it's in the G chord. Simplest uh, thing. Now, um, we discussed C. Yeah, you can do another chromaticism. Okay, three, four on the second string into the open E string if you like. and then go back to uh, G. And if you play the open E string, then it creates G6. So you can play around with that. And then you can go back to one, if you like a G7, or you can remain on G6. You can change from a minor sound to a major sound. The minor sound would be the pentatonic sound, okay? While the uh, major sound would be the The major scale there. So um, again, I don't want to overburden you. I want to give you ideas, so let's leave scales out of it. Just think about licks. It's easier. Uh, it's easier that way to train your ear to recognize the differences. So um, now we have D7. Now for D7, we have this shape that we all know and love, but it's very confined. And I explained why in the blues in A. Uh, lesson, but just in short, you don't have much to do here. 
Okay, because you only have two notes to play around with in your bass, uh, your bass line, and that's not enough. So I prefer this shape, the C7 shape, up two frets. And this gives us so much to play around with. And again, chromatics. And chromatics. And open strings. Okay? And you can play around with five and three on the E string. down to C, you can also do chromatics. Okay? And everything connects really in a really neat way in blues and G. So you don't even have to get uh, around the neck to explore many, many different options. Now you can, you can go back to this shape. And um, because D7 follows G, you can use these two shapes to create interesting licks. It sounds like this, uh, alternating between the shapes. Now, I did this. It's a three hammer on to four on the third string, okay? Uh, leading you into the major third note inside G, so you can do this and five on the fourth, which you have in this shape, so yeah, you can use it as, um, as a riff as well, okay? and you can use it as a, a leading lick. Okay, because it's all inside G, but if you're playing the three on the second string and then lead to D7, it's a surprise. And then you can do a turnaround. Okay, which is simply okay, three, two, one, zero on strings two and four. And then chromatically into D7 or, right, or a high D7 even, or even this, if you want. Um, I'll get around to that in a second. Um, right, this, and it's... Um, If you want to keep the bass going, you can bar, but you need to change the shape so you can use the thumb again. Hey, but it's still uncomfortable. So, um, hey, you can just let go of the bass there and create a dramatic moment. So. And then the bass move brings you back to D and into the beat. Now, um, the D shape that I use here is 8, 7, 7, and 0, okay, because it's a part of the, the barred A shape on 5 with the 7th note. So you can use that, or you can use this. Okay, it's 8, 10, and 11 on strings 1, 2, and 3, okay, because it's the E-shaped version with the seventh note. So this with the open D-shape. So you can also use that if you like, um, but beware, it's difficult to go back down from that. So you can use this in your blues in A or your blues in D, with the drop D tuning, um, I also have a lesson for that, so um, you don't have to do it here. Okay, so you can, however, do 
Okay, so like, uh, let me think about it. The one in three on springs one and two, if you take it chromatically two frets up and put a bar on the third, uh, third fret, becomes C7. So you can use that. Right? Nice move. And then you can use it up to five and seven for D, but um, it'll take me a while to find a suitable lick, so I'll leave that up to you as a challenge, okay? So I think I gave you more than enough ideas in this lesson already, so uh, you have fun with this, and before you go, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of free lessons over here, so I don't see it any reason why you shouldn't and I don't understand why you haven't already. So click the subscribe button and keep updated. I upload a new lesson every couple of days or so. So um, I'll see you the next lesson. Bye for now. Enjoy.